Hi everybody, I'm so happy to be doing a Facebook live video today. I'm so happy to be here. And today I want to address something very important. And it's about the best time to address your eating. So when is the best time to address your food and eating or any other health issue that might be on your mind or that you are facing? And so to get into this, I want to share a little story about myself that I'm a little bit afraid to admit. Um, because every so often, you know, I go through periods where, you know, I don't write a newsletter, I don't do a Facebook Live, I, you know, I don't do these type of reach out activities. And I, you know, it's because I'm too busy or I feel uninspired or I feel like my tips are unimportant. And it's so interesting to see how one week of not doing a video or sending out an email could quickly turn into two months. And it's, it's a really interesting thing. See if you could relate because the longer I wait to resend a video, um, the more the perfectionism, you know, starts to kick in. I feel like I have to say the perfect thing or look really perfect. Um, and I start feeling yuckier and yuckier. I feel like I'm not connecting with people who want to hear my message. And I feel more to, out of alignment with the intentions I set for myself. And I guess the worst part is I start to feel out of alignment with myself. And as I was thinking about this, I was like, wow, this sounds so much like my relationship with food, the way it used to be. Because, you know, um, when I struggled with food, it was like that. Like if I didn't go to the gym for a while, one week would turn into two months all of a sudden. Or if I wasn't eating well, I would just keep on, you know, not addressing what's going on with my food. And it would, one week would easily turn into two months or maybe even six months of eating that wasn't going the way I wanted it to be. So if... So I just want you to check in. Are there any aspects of your eating that are stressing you out that you're not addressing? Um, are you waiting for the perfect moment or the perfect person to show up to inspire you or to support you in making a change? Are you waiting for you know life to become a little bit less stressful before you address what's going on with your food? I mean, is that profound inspiration just not showing up in the way that you expected? And I think, you know, so importantly is to ask yourself, are you annoyed with yourself for being stuck here? You know, do you need some push to move into the right direction? So if you can relate to any of this, please give me a thumbs up or write the word relate um, in the comments below. Um, if you write relate, it might push me up in the feed and maybe somebody you care about who's struggling with this could actually see this video. So this could be a real problem if you don't address it because you could start to have some health issues if you're not addressing what's going on with your food. You'll start to feel drained in your energy. You probably won't feel good physically. I mean, especially if you're overeating or if you're under eating. Also, um, psychologically, it doesn't feel good to be so out of alignment with what's best for you. And you might be wasting valuable time uh, not caring for yourself when you could be actually feeling really good and not feeling present. So clearly, long story short, this does need to be addressed. Hi, my name is Eve Lahijani. I'm a registered dietitian. Some people call me their nutrition coach. And my passion is helping people trust their hunger and make peace with food so they could be free in this world of abundant food. And so for those of you who are waiting for a sign or who would like some tips, here we go. So um, it's really critical to address what's happening with your food and eating. First of all, to address any health issues or maybe even resolve them. Also, one of my favorite things is when you start making steps in the direction of your best intentions, you'll notice a surge of energy that actually helps you move forward in taking these steps. Also, you start to feel better physically when you start taking good care of your health and addressing what's going on with your eating. And if you're not already feeling good physically, you'll psychologically start to feel better. You'll use your time more effectively, be more present, and just simply be more aligned with your highest self. So here are some steps. Um, step number one is take a time out. Go somewhere comfortable and quiet. If right now you're struggling with this, take the time right now um, to, and all you need is a pen and a paper to do this exercise. So go somewhere um, take the time. Step number two is to center yourself. Clear your mind. My favorite way to clear my mind is to take a few deep breaths. 
So we could do that together right now if you have time. You know, take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, release whatever is not serving you. Any judgments, fears. Again, when you breathe in, breathe in relaxation and peace. And as you exhale, relax, uh, release any sense of guilt or shame. Again, when you breathe in, breathe in the sense of worth. The sense of everything will be okay. And as you exhale, again, release anything that's not serving you. Now, step number three. This is a fun step. I want you to list out 10 to 20 small steps you could take to help improve your eating or to address a health issue that you've been wanting to address. That's right, just 10 or 20 steps um, that would move you in the right direction. The smaller the step, the better. The easier the step, the better. So take some time, you could do this right now, to list out 10 to 20 things that you could do that could move your health in, in the direction that you want it to. So I hope you're taking the time to write out this list now. I actually did this a week ago when I was brainstorming what to write about in this newsletter or what to, what to talk about in this Facebook Live. So I'm really glad I did that. Um, so your steps could include things like, you know, going gro grocery shopping today. If you don't have time today to go grocery shopping, maybe you could take some time and write out a list. Maybe what you want to try is this new yoga studio, um, you know, in your neighborhood. If that's too big of a step, that's okay. Maybe when you walk to your car today, maybe you could take a walk around the parking lot. Maybe what you could do is fill a prescription that you haven't filled in a while, or maybe you could make an appointment with a doctor if you haven't seen one in a while. Uh, one of my favorites is buying floss on your way home. If you've been neglecting your dental hygiene, uh, maybe the next step is to go and buy a toothbrush today. Um, maybe preparing snacks for your long work day tomorrow, or maybe when you're done watching this, getting up and getting a glass of water if you can't remember the last time you've hydrated yourself. Again, no item is too small. And in fact, the smaller the item, the better. The next step, once you've listed out you know, 10 to 20 different items that you could do to address your health, you don't have to do all of them. In fact, all I want you to do is pick one item. Pick one item on the list that you have the most energy on, that you know sounds the most interesting or feels the best to you. Um, and go and do that one thing. That's it. After you do that one thing, go back to the list and pick your next item on that list. If nothing is inspiring you on that list, that's totally cool. You could rewrite the list or come up with new items. So I hope you love this, these, these um, steps I'm giving you. Um, if you look at this list and you feel like, okay, this sounds really good in theory, Eve, you know, you're so Pollyanna or, you know, you're so naive to think that I could easily go and write something and go and do it. Um, I, I totally understand that. So first of all, I just want to, you know, send you some love because I know how frustrating that could feel to really want to do a thing and not be able to do it. So I have some tips for you, you know, first of all, that item that you're choosing to do just might be too big. I wonder how you could break it down. That might really help. Also, you know, if you're noticing, you know, taking care of yourself is proving to be challenging or hard, maybe you need to forgive yourself. You know, I know certainly because I didn't send this newsletter or, you know, uh, do a Facebook live for a while, I was mad at myself. So I actually had to take some time to forgive myself. And self-forgiveness is an important thing to learn how to do. This is something I go per quite deep with my clients in teaching them how to forgive themselves. So maybe that's something that would be beneficial for you. Or, you know, if you're unable to follow through on taking care of yourself, that might be a sign to reach out to a coach um, because a coach is well-trained in how to navigate those feelings of resistance. And also when you have a coach, it also helps you feel more accountable to somebody. And it's just so wonderful to know somebody is there who cares for you. So again, if you feel like you need to get started um, on your health journey or you want to address what's going on with your food and eating, we talked about some practical steps. Step number one is, you know, take a sheet of paper and a pen or a pencil and take the time. Um, step two is to center yourself, you know, get clear, ground yourself by, you know, taking a few deep breaths, 
maybe a short meditation and create a list, create a list of 10 to 20 items you could do in the next 24 hours that could take your health or your eating uh, in the right direction. And just pick one of the items on your list, your favorite one, the one that you have the most energy on and go do that thing in the next 24 hours. And again, if this is too hard for you, if you want some support, um, send me a private message that says food freedom and um, we could start a conversation there. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope that was helpful. Um, again, my name is Eve. I'm a registered dietitian. I'm a nutrition coach and my passion is to help people trust their hunger, make peace with food so they could have freedom in this world of abundant food. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.